It's been a while since I've done a video and I've started using a few of these ESP Pixel sticks. These can drive pixels using a, a Wi-Fi signal. They're uh, actually handy little devices. You can get them out in a remote location. They're very small. They're very inexpensive, about $30 for one. Uh, and, and the location I've been using it, um, the Wi-Fi signal is kind of weak. And it's, you know, it doesn't need, not a huge demand like it would be in my Christmas light show. And so what I've decided to do is experiment with the Wi-Fi uh, card right here, which is the ESP8266. And this one that it comes with, it's got its own built-in Wi-Fi antenna, which is pretty good, but not quite as quite as good as a larger one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up one of these antennas to, the, to a different board, which right here is called uh, D1 Mini Pro. And it has here a little... Uh, a connector there for the uh, Wi-Fi antenna. So I'm going to experiment with that and see how that works out. It solves my problem. And also, you can use this in your Christmas light display. Um, these ESP sticks, they'll work with X lights. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, uh, options associated with this. So I hope I can help somebody out there if they are interested in using one of these, uh, these little cards. Okay, so now I'm going to solder D1 Mini Pro to the pins, which I've inserted in my ESP Pixel Stick header there. I just slide this over and with a little bit of the pins coming out. And I'm going to ensure that I have the USB connector pointing towards the connector on this particular board. You can also check the, uh, the pin outs on there to make sure you get it all. So I'm just going to go through and solder this up. Got the header uh, all soldered to the D1 Mini Pro. I can take this off here. And now it is all ready to go. Oh. I'll solder together. Next thing will be to remove that, move that little tiny resistor, which is right here. It's going to take a little bit of effort to do that. Um, it's a real delicate operation. You can't really hurt it. It just takes time, and it's a very, very small component. All right, now I'm going to remove that resistor. Or should I say move it? Okay, so now it's off. That was relatively easy. So just to show you how small that is, there's a little bitty resistor in the end of my thumb. Now I'm going to move it at 90 degrees from where it was. All right, so I've uh, assembled the box, uh, put the connectors on it, and I have the ESP8266 with the ESP Pixel stick. Um, setting aside my little project box. I have a PG7 and PG9 connectors, which I drilled holes just a little bit larger and then use some Gorilla Glue. There it is right there, super glue to, uh, to stick them in place and that'll waterproof it. You will see the connector for the antenna and I use a 1564th drill bit, which is the right size to thread that in there. It's a nice tight fit. Um, and just use one of my ratchets to screw it into place and then I screw the antenna on the outside I have connected to here the power supply. You'll see it's a 12 volt power supply 12 and a half amps 150 watts will be more than enough for what I'm going to put on the end of it It's a waterproof unit so I can sit outside unprotected next step will be to um, program the ESP8266 and I'm going to put WLED on it um, for use in my landscape lighting. I have now connected the ESP8266 to the USB port of my computer. Um, to install WLED software, what you do is you go to install WLED.me. Uh, they made it so easy to install WLED now. Um, it was a much it was a, a several step process before. Now it's pretty much just a one step. So. I navigate to the page. You can change the version of the code up to you. What you want to do here, this is the latest uh, stable version. I'm going to click install. 
Uh, it comes up with the COM port right there, um, and I'm going to click Connect, and it's going to start its install process. Anyway, I got to click in W Install. Do you want to install? Yeah, existing day will be erased. Yes, I want to install. It's erasing it, and then it will install it. All right, now it's finishing it, and I'm going to click Next, and now you enter your Wi-Fi information, your SSID number, and now your password, and we click Connect. So it sets it automatically for DHCP. Uh, I'm going to visit my device here is what I'm going to do next and you see it just opens up the web page right away and now I'm going to configure it I like static addresses I click, I'll click Wi-Fi setup and now I'm going to go through and create my own static IP address okay I gotta you gotta do each little box And I'm going to pick 170. All right, I already know. And now the one another important thing to do is if you don't do this, it won't connect up and it won't work. You have to do your gateway too. I've made that mistake several times myself. And I go, why isn't it working? Dot one, dot one for my router. Okay, I'm gonna save and connect. All right, so now it should be good. Now it's not gonna find it. It's gonna try and find it because I changed its Wi-Fi address. Now I'll change this here, 170. And there we go. Now you have on the computer, you have a PC mode or what they had here is what you would see on your phone. All right. The next step, you want to configure your LED preferences. One thing to keep in mind is you have a current limiter here, so you can change this. I'm going to change this to 4500. Since I have a 5 amp fuse on my ESP Pixel Stick, I am using 12 volt pixels. Um, this way it will help kind of try to calculate the right output. This WS28. 11 is what I have, so 28x, that's proper. Okay, my string length, 30 is fine for now. I'm just going to hook up one floodlight to it. Um, and with that, it looks like we're all set. I'm going to click Save. All right, I'm back. Now, when I unplug this from my computer, I can control the lights. All right, so what I've done now is I've taken the uh, the D1 Mini Pro, connected up the antenna, and put it in my little project box, and connected it to the uh, Pixel Stick, and also connected that with uh, three different uh, 10 watt floodlights. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it on. There you go. It's uh, on solid color right here. And blue, if I take this and I move it, say, to red, I can turn it red. Green, I can take it to green. Um, I can also pick all kinds of different um, effects here. You can see you get a bunch of them here. And I like the color loop. All right, and now it's going to loop through the default color set. So this is just logging in through the web address on your local network and you can actually change it to different colors this is one that cycles between the blue and red and there's just you'll see there's just a ton of options here and you can select you know different types of effects uh, you know there's just all kinds of options for you here and what I'll also show you here is in the configuration uh, if you want to, you can set this up for 
you know, communicating it directly with X lights using this software package. And I'll go down here in the DMX network input. You got the E131. You can add this as a controller and X lights, and it'll receive the data over Wi Fi. So that gives you lots of options with your shows. I wouldn't recommend a lot of these devices in your show or ones that have to respond quickly um, to lots of data changes. So, uh, you know, be, be mindful of that it is a Wi Fi connection, it's not a hardwired connection. Most of my show is hard hardwired. And I'll just go back here and you can see back and I can go right here and I can toggle it off. So now we've completed the, uh, the little build here with the D1 Mini Pro and connect that to an ESP Pixel Stick uh, with a new antenna on there so you have better Wi-Fi gain on it. There I connected it up and I got it through one of the WLED software's uh, color cycles there using an outdoor 12 volt power supply i hope this is helpful for somebody out there so have a wonderful day